Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm ready to test some new drivers out. Yeah, we got a unique test today. We put together a list of our top five drivers from the past decade. Um, and today we're going to test all those. Um, well, you're going to test all those. You're going to have 30 shots. We're going to go five different models, kind of six shots with each one. Um, and we've got really some great uh, options here that are going to present value in terms of a cheaper cost, but they still compete with the newest models in terms of uh, the performance. So we've got Callaway GBB Epic, TaylorMade Slider, we've got Cobra King LTD, we've got the TaylorMade 2016 M2, and the Ping G400. Um, we'll present those kind of in order of the, the list that we kind of rank them, and Thomas will hit them, and we'll see uh, what we get. So uh, I don't know if you what you know about these models um, from the past, but um, I know you've had some fittings, obviously, with them. But what do you think we're going to see? Is there any that you um, might favor, or do you kind of want to wait and see how the test goes? I'm interested to test this because we've got drivers that are up to, you know, 2013 model with the, with the slider there, mm -hmm. uh, up to about 2017. So we've got a few years old, older technology compared yeah. to 2019, 2020. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the spin rate tests, how that ball speed tests. I know manufacturers always come out with every year this, this thing's going to go two mile an hour fast or yeah. go faster. So I'm really interested to pay attention to that. And then also very interested to take a look at the consistency. So I yeah. want to see how straight these clubs still go as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, again, there's, there's a couple models here that might, um, you know, benefit the forgiveness and the accuracy a little bit, where there's some that might be lower spitting and um, that way produce more distance. But anyway, I th I'm really excited to see how these perform. Because again, we've lauded these as the top five of the past decade. And now we get to see Thomas Campbell hit them uh, on TrackMan for us. So uh, let's get after it, huh? Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, we'll start with number five on our list here, TaylorMade. Uh, slider or SLDR 460. Um, I know this was touted as kind of a very low spinning driver, at least for its time. Uh, things have now changed, and I think it'd be almost better released now uh, in 2019, 2020 than maybe back in 2013 when it was originally released. But uh, let's just get to it here and kind of get your impressions, huh? All right, sounds good. And so we'll hit all five. I know you're hitting with the same length shaft and same, you know, I think 10 and a half degrees for every. Model, correct? Yeah, so I, I searched the store to try and find all these different heads at 10.5 degrees aloft. Um, what I did is I got an old fit um, shaft from our tour van that can go on every different head. Okay. So it's the Graphite Design BB6X, um, 45 inches in length. This is the shaft that I played myself. Okay. So it's going to be pretty pretty similar to yeah. me. Obviously, we're just purely testing the heads out yeah. here and we're able to test, you know, with the same sh shaft to try and limit mm -hmm. anything. Yep. All right. Good. Well, Thomas, after six shots now, um, what do you think? I think that's our actually oldest model uh, in our test in 2013. So I don't know if you hit a driver that's that old in a while, but what did you think? I have not. Even that last shot that I just hit there, I felt like I mishit a little bit. It's still, I think it's still got over 300 yards. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, yeah. carried 280 on 303. So still plenty of forgiveness kind of built into this driver for 2013 model. Yeah. I think, you know, Probably the biggest takeaway is the value you may achieve by playing something like this, like this if you don't want to spend right. $500, $550 on a brand new driver yeah. 2019, 2020, essentially. Um, so there's clubs out there to be played, essentially, yeah. what, I, what I've noticed. Yeah, that, that'll be a theme, I think, with all of these, is you're going to get a, a better value than, uh, or at least a really good value in comparison to maybe buying something if you didn't want to spend, like you were saying, the big $500 price tag for something brand new. Yep. All right, what do you think in terms of look and feel. I know that's actually the white head yep. of the, the TaylorMade S SLDR. There was the standard, I think, gray uh, crown as well. Uh, but what did you think of the look and feel there? Correct. I couldn't find a uh, 2013 gray model, yeah. so that's why I had to use the white head. Um, it looked like it was a little more compact to me looking down at. So a lot of drivers that I've noticed kind of got larger and larger as times kind of got over on. 
This club looks very, very compact. I mean, it feels like it's pretty high from the from the top to the bottom here, yeah. and almost a little more compact in okay. this area. A lot of other drivers I've seen get kind of larger and kind of get deeper. Mm -hmm. Seems compact, so I think the idea yeah. behind this one is kind of a lower spinning model, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. It's funny, I always look at, I turn this around and I see that sliding weight that's kind of in the middle of the club face. A lot of times you'll see that sliding weight at the front or at the yeah. back or so kind of the changes over time is kind of interesting sure. to notice between them. So Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the slider really was ahead of its time uh, a little bit because you had that big adjustable weight and there really wasn't many at the time and kind of same with that really low spin head um, where kind of back at that time a lot of it was forgiveness, MOI, there wasn't really the option for the high speed player. Yep. And I think this presented it and it just was, it wasn't quite met uh, the same way as it I think would be now if it was released or something like that it was released now but um, but yeah that obviously you know it performed really well for the high speed players at the time and it's still something that's played quite a bit so uh, perfect now let's move on to the Cobra King LTD That was better. Well, what would you think of the Cobra King LTD there? I mean, you know, obviously we kind of expected it to spin a little bit more, and it did. Yep. But um, I know you noticed a couple times you mishit it, and you thought it still you know, carried and performed pretty well, given that it's a little bit of an older driver, I believe a 2016 model, but yet, you know, the forgiveness was still there and some of those mishits. Yeah, I mean, the forgiveness was definitely there. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that on those mishits, I think I missed about three of the six that I hit with this one. Yeah. It's just sort of climb and climb and yeah. spin and not quite go, go sure, quite as far yeah. compared to I mean, with, with the tailor made yeah. this for sure. Yeah, what'd you think of the look? Um, and maybe the feel as well on at contact. Looking down at it, for me, it looked like it's a lot wider from kind of like the heel to the toe. Looked like it's more, it's wider and not quite as deep face. Okay. Um, so that could be part of the reason why you know, I've, I've always liked kind of a very compact face that's kind of high from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Um, I was having a little bit of a struggle with the look. It looked like it was sitting maybe it's kind of a little bit flatter than what, what I'm used to as well. Yeah. Set up fine. I just noticed that it just wasn't quite going as far. Sure. It was just spinning a little right. bit more. Yeah, I mean the the TaylorMade is going to have the spin elastic at that center of gravity way up. Yep. Um, this is a neutral center of gravity with the LTD, and then they also there's actually two models of the LTD. There's the LTD Pro as well, which has a little bit more center of gravity yeah. forward. So um, that would maybe have that you know a little bit lower spin if you were to test that one. Uh, but the LTD is what kind of played for more golfers uh, when it was released and still does. So that's kind of the one we went with for the test here today. But um, yeah, it's still very popular among uh, kind of the Cobra loyalists yeah. out there. So I think I would have probably fit more into the pro model as opposed yeah, to just in the would. LTD model there. Um, obviously, you look at the back of it here, you notice the center of gravity. Yeah. How it's kind of positioned kind of three quarters of the way back is yeah. just kind of really interesting how they've, how they've done that there too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, and it does have some adjustability too in terms of draw settings and fade settings and whatnot. With, uh, I think there's yep. draw settings with the standard model and then with the Pro one, there's some fade settings for those yep. higher speed players. Um, all right, we'll go to Ping G400, number three here. Yeah, I like that. Well, G400 did pretty well for you here. It did, really, really well. Uh, I was really impressed with how I had that right to left ball flight mm -hmm. a little bit. Just found it easier squaring that club face up for some reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the G400, it, the series, there's three models we should talk about first. G400, kind of the standard model, and they have the LST and the SFT. So uh, LST is, again, that low spin model, which has kind of been a theme in manufacturers the last few years where they they kind of introduce a low spin model as well. And then yep. 
the SFT was kind of that draw biased, uh, maybe lower center of gravity model for those players that struggle with the slice or maybe struggle getting the ball in the air. So there are three models here, but we got the standard one and really it performed pretty well for you. I mean, you, that smash was about one, four, nine, one, five every time. Um, I mean, and, and clearly it performed well for ping um, when it was released. I think it was 2017 or 2018. Yep. And it still works now, obviously, and it worked well for you there. What did you like the most uh, about it? I mean, the consistency, like you mentioned, 14915. I think it was almost like 15 every yeah. single time yeah. when I kind of looked up. So mm -hmm. that, that's what impressed me the, the most there. And then the consistency of bull flight as well. I, yeah. For some reason, I don't know, it look, it could be to do with these turbulators making mm. it a little easier for me to get that club face kind of squared up at impact or get myself lined up a little bit easier. But I did, did not have a problem turning this thing over. And this is just the standard model too. Yeah. So yeah. What did you think of the look and feel, specifically feel? Because I know, I think prior to the G400, I think one of the things that you know, a lot of people thought maybe with ping drivers they might be missing a little bit was the feel at impact. What do you think of that? It felt really solid. And yeah. I've been on that same kind of path as well. I haven't played too many ping drivers yeah. in my career for that re same reason. But those four, the five or six shots felt like they were, you know, it felt like they were crushed out of the middle yeah. of the club face every single time. Yeah, you I know, mean, you, yeah. you did. The numbers <laughs> yeah. Yeah. speak yeah. for itself there. For a 10.5 degree driver for me to, you know, consistently do that, it was, it was pretty solid too. Yeah, so, I mean, so. the G400 series was really a home run for ping and it's still being played, yeah. I believe, um, up until very recently, Cam Champ, you know, the longest hitter on, uh, on tour and one of the bombers out there was playing G400 well into 2019. And uh, I mean, it's still, it was, it's clearly a home run for, yep. for paying all three models. So yep. um, great success here and it showed out well in our test here. Yeah, so. great option to save a few bucks compared to the 4, 410 model, which is, yeah. you know, obviously an upgrade in technology, mm -hmm. but probably not too different. Yeah, yep. yeah. I mean, you get great value. That's yep. a, that's essentially what all uh, five of these models are going to bring if you're not trying to uh, spend the big bucks for the new driver. Correct. Um, all right, let's go to number two on our list here, which is the TitherMade 2016 M2. It was so easy to hit this thing straight. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, Taylor made 2016 M2. I know the, the big um, success factor for that driver has been and still is the forgiveness. And I know you just commented right there how easy it is just to hit it straight. And uh, I mean, clearly the dispersion, you know, for you is pretty darn small there. Uh, with those, you know, five out of those six shots and had one miss, which still, again, it was pretty straight and you thought it would be maybe more right than yeah. it was. <laughs> it was still in the fairway. So that's yeah. the important piece to kind of look at. I mean, that one that I missed there to the right didn't go as far right as even those other ones that were going mm. to the right there too. Yeah. That felt like a, that was a pretty ugly golf swing. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the other five were yeah. really, really solid and very consistent bullfight on them every single time. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think when TaylorMade released the M1 in 2016, um, this was kind of, the M2 is sort of not an afterthought, but it was released kind of secondhand, um, kind of uh, to target some of those golfers that maybe didn't want all the adjustability on the sole or wanted, again, that more forgiving uh, lower center of gravity. And it turned out that this one also offered low spin as well. And you kind of get that great combination of the low spin, the distance, and then the forgiveness as well, like you, we saw here. It was easy for you to hit straight, repeatable ball flight as well every time. So, uh, you know, I had great performance here. What do you think of the look um, and the feel, because I know the look is a little unique uh, on the crown is that there's like that white stripe kind of on yep. the leading edge. Um, and I know that was kind of, that's still kind of Taylor Mage's thing where they have a little bit of a, a new color, so to speak, along that leading edge. But what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think it just kind of had the transition from the white to the black and having this little piece in the yeah. that middle here helps line, my, line me up a little bit easier okay. there too. You know, you can pretty much tell what that club face is is open, see more of that club face. Sure, yeah. Now I can see more of the face as opposed to the, the white. So I think okay. it helps to align that club face up a little bit easier. Um, one thing I will touch on though too, with you talked about adjustability with M1 versus M2. Because this is not a, an adjustable club in the back, it's high MOI, so it's mm -hmm. gonna be very, very forgiving. Yeah. And it's, it's stood the test of time. I noticed 
2016 model was almost, I don't want to say it was better than the 2017 M2 model, but I didn't see any major advantage of playing yeah. the 2017 model versus the 2016 sure. model. So this thing has definitely stood the, stood the test of time. For yeah, sure. absolutely. I mean, yep. golfers out there that um, are looking for forgiveness, you know, as kind of their number one priority in their driver um, and don't want to pay the big bucks for something brand new, the M2 2016 from TaylorMade might be the best option because um, it's going to give you, I mean, it's going to be a great price tag, but you're also going to get the forgiveness um, that really, I bet that competes, if not exceeds some of the newest models in terms of forgiveness that have been offered in 2019 and now here in 2020. Yeah, like I said, this one has definitely stood the test of the time, 2016 mm -hmm. M2. Yep. All right, let's get to number one on our list, the uh, final model here, the Callaway GBB Epic. Very interesting. Well, now you've hit the, the number one driver uh, from the past decade, Callaway GBB Epic. Um, I mean, you're, in terms of distance, I mean, you was the number one driver. Number one test. driver distance. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I mean, I think really you talked about jailbreak before. I think yep. that obviously has been a huge win for Callaway over the past few years, and they're still gonna they're gonna keep adding it into all their drivers and fairy woods and hybrids. Um, but what do you think? I mean, I was surprised a little bit by the low spin, which I think helped generate the, the distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I know you played this driver in the past too, so. It's interesting because when I was looking down at this, it looked like it had a lot of loft on it. I was worried it wasn't going to go as far. But the spin, I couldn't believe how low that yeah. spin was. I mean, I know this is set at 10.5. Everything was set at 10.5, but it just looked like it had a little more loft on it. Mm -hmm. For some reason, that probably helped. Looking down at it maybe helped me turn it over a little bit easier too. Um, but the spin, uh, the spin yeah. was 2,200 kind of every single yeah. time, with the exception of the one where I left the face open, mm -hmm. obviously that one. Which, went a little shorter. Yeah, but I mean, it, 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 I mean, if you compare that miss to the right to the distance of the other clubs, and it's still com competing yeah. very well even with the rest of the you know, uh, clubs in our test. So GBB Epic in terms of distance, has lower spin, that was, I mean, it performed really well, and I think there's a reason why. I mean, it's number one in our test here. So, um, what do you think of the look and feel? I know you again, you played this before, but how did that compare to maybe the other models we tested? Yeah, I mean, playing this for I played this for about 18 months before switching driver to a 2019 model. Um, I question why I switch right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do question why I switch because that those numbers were really, really, really solid. Um, I love. For me, I've always liked the way a Callaway drivers looked. Yeah, it's kind of just nice, kind of round shaped, essentially, um, pear shaped looking club down, look, looking down at it. Um, off the club face, it sounded like it was it was pretty loud. Yeah, it, it definitely it was. was pretty loud off the, off the face, um, but it just felt solid. So mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't complain with the numbers. Yeah, uh, they shocked me right there with those numbers right there. For so. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's. You want to look a little bit deeper into the numbers and yeah, let's can do look that. at the averages, yeah. and we can see uh, what we got here. So, just want to kind of pay attention a little bit here to the dis dispersion on the screen. You can obviously yeah. notice I hit six shots with each one. What's that? Six times five is about thirty swings. Um, there's, there's a couple of outliers in there, yeah. so I just want to just kind of touch on those outliers and maybe eliminate those. Keep the five of best of six best up there. Yep. Um, so, if we look at Start with this yellow one, we see this is kind of short right over to the right, so we could probably take that one out for the Cobra. Um, we've got the tailor-made slider, that very first shot that I hit today. That was going a little bit over here to the left, a little short left, could probably take that one out. Um, we have the one I left the face open on with the Callaway Epic, a little bit shorter there. And then we have the tailor-made M2, it's a little bit shorter there. Interesting, and it's important to note, the Ping G400, we'll notice six yeah. of them were all very, very solid. There isn't really didn't, an outlier Didn't there. really need to take an outlier out. Um, and we'll take a look at that smash factor on every single <laughs> one of them. So that's always important to note there as well. Uh, see if I can find one 
just to be fair. There we go. So that one was the shortest. No, that one wasn't the shortest distance. <laughs> that one was. I mean, they're very, very similar. You're, essentially. you're the consistency. I was nitpicking between those yeah. there too. So if we do that now, let's take a look here at kind of some numbers and kind of work our way from kind of left to right. Yeah. Um, I find it really interesting that you know I was hovering around about 110 miles an hour with the first three, and the last couple. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because I feel like I should be getting tired at this point. I did warm up before as well, so that's you know 25, yeah. 30 drivers in. Um, so interesting that their club speed started picking up a little bit more. So it's why why I bring that up is important because we want to take pay attention to that smash factor and yeah. ball speed and see if the ball speed actually went up or not. Because um, for example, Callaway Epic, I was swinging that the fastest. You will notice the ball speed really wasn't that much faster than the last couple there. Yeah. They were at basically 67, 60. Six and a half, about yeah. 667, 66 and a half. So we see that and we'll notice the smash factor with that club was actually the lowest of them all. Um, however, the reason why this club went so much further was to do with the spin. I yeah. mean, it's, it was night and day, that spin rate was kind mm -hmm. of the lowest out of, out of them all. Um, with the exception of the ten made slider, considering it was going to the yeah. right. Really interesting how that one was yeah. spinning. And that was a 2013 a model, right? So Yeah, that's a good point that we, you know, you, the, the slider was kind of going out to the right, which is kind of lends itself to a little bit more spin for a right-handed player, but um, that was able to maintain a low spin of 2,200 or so. Um, you wonder if maybe you had maybe hit, you know, turned the club over a little bit more with the slider, if those spin numbers would have been at or lower of, of the level of the DBB Epic here. Yeah, and you also wonder, you know, I was the first driver, I guess I did warm up, but I probably got pretty excited there at the end with those last <laughs> couple, and you notice the club speed did kind of jump up yeah. a little bit. I also did tug those ones, a little, this one a little bit more, so when you do, yeah pull it, that club speed's gonna maybe just be a touch faster sure, as well. Sure. Um, so that's interesting. Ball speed, you know, we'll notice the ball speed with the first couple, 63, 63, uh, and then the last three were kind of 67, essentially. Yeah. So I always like to look at smash factor because that's the efficiency mm -hmm. of, you know, between the club speed and the ball speed. And, and you look at the Ping G400, 1.50 consistency of plus 0. 0.00. <laughs> It doesn't get any so better than it that. It doesn't get any better than that. And I had a far t hard time eliminating that six one out too, because that yeah, six one was right. also the yeah. same. So consistency was really, really good with that particular club. I was able to turn that thing over just a little bit. So mm -hmm. definitely performed really, really well. Um, interesting, the last couple of, the, of clubs that we hit, if you look at launch angle, the M M2 and the Epic launched a little bit higher um, than, the, than the other three. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all 10.5 degree heads, but just interesting to see that. But then, even if they're launching a little higher and a little bit lower spin, that's yep. why that Epic was just kind of oh, going, yeah. low, you know. You see that spin at 2160 versus all the others, and it's just why it was going so much yeah. further than everything else there too. So, interesting to see. Um, move this over a little bit here. Carry distance. 290 with the GBB Epic. It's pretty solid. I'm very happy with that. Um, 286 with the M6. Oh, sorry, the 2016 M2. Um, and then we have 281, 282 with mm -hmm. the G400 and the slider. So those two are you know, pretty solid as well. Cobra King, I didn't quite hit this one as solid. You'll notice, obviously, you can see on the screen here yeah. that you know, all those shots that I hit. Could have been five or six bad swings in a row, but I just didn't really connect with anything. Best one was this one right here, and it barely got to kind of 300 yeah. yards. So um, then that one didn't quite perform well. As well. I talked about how it just looked like it, you know, the heel to toe was kind of yeah. very long. It just didn't suit my eye very well. Um, that's why it didn't quite perform as well. The good news is the spin rate with all of them for drivers, they're all spinning under 3,000. Under 3, yeah. well, 10 and a half degrees aloft for me. I, mm -hmm. I was a little worried that maybe I might balloon it a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe that's the way I go. You know, if I can if I can get a high launch, low spin, it's really what you're looking for a driver. Yeah. So I was able to get that thing flying pretty far, and then because the spin rate was so low with the Epic driver, it rolled out so much further than everything mm -hmm. else. So 315 total versus you got these other ones that would hover around a little yep. over 300. Um, but because the spin rate was so much lower, that Epic right. went a lot further than everything else there too. Yeah, I so. mean, if you're looking for low spin, there's a couple options here you can take from this test for sure. Um, the slider and the, the Epic, 
two that performed really well in the test, but also kept the spin down and a 10 and a half degree driver. Um, you know, dispersion wise, we had the M2 was great, the Epic was great, the G400 was great as well. Um, you had, uh, that was probably the most consistent too in terms of the smash factor, the efficiency, all that was very consistent with the G400 there. So obviously all five great options. Um, and then really, if you, it depends on what you're looking for after that, you'll be able to kind of find one out of these five that should be able to fit your game uh, for those of you watching, uh, looking for a driver maybe that you don't want to pay maximum price for something. Um, you're gonna be able to find something out of these five options, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's, that's what it comes down to. You've, you've got value here with, with these clubs here. You've got a club that's made in 2013 that performed almost just as well here. Yep. Um, great spin rate on that one. You know, you're obviously not gonna pay as much because it's mm -hmm. a 2013 model. Then you've got a 2017 model with the GBB Epic that, yes, it was going a little bit further. And then you've got the 2016 M2, um, end of the day. I mean, that was probably yeah. flying the straightest and was mm -hmm. the most consistent yeah. there too. So you've got options. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't touch on the Ping G400 with how consistent every single time yeah. my smash factor was with that one. I was able to turn that one thing over a little bit. So all great options there um, with regards to value. Mm -hmm. on drivers that have been from kind of from the past decade essentially well yeah well thomas thanks for hitting the 30 shots for us today this was a great test um, golfers out there once again five great options for you uh, a little bit cheaper than maybe something brand new but you're going to get great performance uh, out of each one and get to help improve your game as well so um, if you enjoyed the video uh, feel free to give us a like and subscribe to our channel we'll have a lot more content like this for you in the future and uh, we'll catch you next time